Okay, so we're just going to go through this cutting method of cutting an R2 dome and in some case an ALT dome. These are available from me through the forum and we're just going to fast forward a lot of it but we'll just do the basics just to get you started. Okay, cool. Right, yes, good point. So, so what are you making today then? <laughs> so usually now with my um, R2D2 domes, the inner dome is cut as well and what I usually do when you line them up, because not all the panels line up accurately, there's a small tolerance in them, I always make sure that I line up the buttons. So these, these two holes here, always make sure they line up with your inner dome and then that should line up everything else and any additional cutting you need to do with this dome always make sure that these button holes are level with the inner dome before you start marking and cutting. Okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way for now. I guess I'm quite ha ha happy to have some, you know, know what I've got to cut. I exactly, you've got reference uh, there. A bit of, bit of reference so there. what are you using to cut the dome, Sam? Well today, Matthew, I'm going to be using this budget saw that I've tapped yep. the end off so I don't hurt myself or cut myself. Um, and that's about it. Okay, that's that's fine. What I, I used to use them, but what I use now are these, which are pretty good. These are Exacto knives uh, with interchangeable blades. You just unscrew this and the blade comes off and you can just change the blade and have different types of blades. The good thing about this is similar to your hacksaw blade, it's very thin, so you can get it through the gaps and get sawn as well. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, PPE. Mm, have you got right. PPE, Sam? I have. I'm wearing my glasses. We're two metres apart. Good man. And Good to hear. Good that's to hear. about it. I don't okay, think so what you can do, because um, I wear glasses, I always rely on these as well. But you can have these. These are these are good enough. Um, if you want to keep your glasses on, looks like you're going skiing, but these are perfectly good. And uh, what I think I'm going to find particularly useful today is, uh, as I'm working with Sam Prentice, these. These are not compulsory, but I think if you're working with Mr Prentice, it's quite nice to have a bit of peace and quiet now and again. Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I normally have to raise my voice when talking to you because you're so bloody old. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to start on the top panel. So I don't need this at the moment. Put that down. But the bean bag's quite useful. I will show the, the bean bag. So. We use these a lot at Pinewood, um, just to put delicate things on your bench to stop the marking and, and scuffing on your bench. Just a nice little bean bag, and then if you're working on the lower panels on this dome, for example, you can then just turn it upside down and angle it and cut. So it's quite a useful thing to have. So let's get them well, cutting. I'm going to number my domes and number all the panels and try and work out the inners and outers because I've not done this before. So of course, I'm going to uh, yes. I'm going to start at the top. Yeah. That was your winner. Good point. Yeah, what's, what Sam's doing there is a very good point. So to always number your panels. So when you've got the inner dome with the R2 as well as the ALT dome, um, it's best to number the panels so you keep them corresponding at all times when you're cutting the dome. And we'll explain, it'll be more apparent when we get to it. Um, actually, Sam, something else you need to do with the ALT dome, mm. those tabs, the up, the up tabs, number them as well. Okay, right, yeah, because yeah. it, it's inconsistent. Exactly, yeah, so they, it was designed for them to be equidistant around the dome, but it's not quite. So just keep make sure you keep your tabs corresponding to the Even on this one, it's upper. not? All of them. All they're, all, they're all laser cut the same. Okay. So um, it's all the same um, file, so they'll, they'll always be like that. I'm not sure why I haven't got a tape measure out and measured it, but it's, it can be a bit of a fact, so it's good to keep them level. Are you writing, you're doing that inside, are you, Sam, those numbers? I'm doing, I'm doing yeah. both because... Uh, I just was a little bit worried that maybe um, I just want everything to sort of correspond to inside and out really. I, yeah. think, I think it's probably yeah. best. Yeah. What would you suggest? Makes sense. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right, so I'm going to get cutting. So what I just realised, because of removing these panels from the dome, I am going to number them myself as well to keep them corresponding with the same. So here we go. But 
they course, should they course. should all be the same size on the R2 dome, but with aluminium, just in case. With aluminium, you've got to remember you shouldn't use a pencil. Correct. Because it corrodes. Yeah. So we're using sharpies. And I might as well, while I'm here, do all the lower panels as well. You alright Sam, can you count that high? You alright? <laughs> yeah, I'm alright actually, thanks. Okay, good. Thank you. Do you keep forgetting the numbers? Yeah. <laughs> no, I forgot what fucking number I was actually. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How many did you get in the end? I am up to number 22, Sam. Hmm. I am up to 22, I think, as well. Oh, cool. 23. Just to be different. Oh, okay. So where do you normally start? I used to start at the top. And then down. Yeah. One thing here when you're cutting as well, especially on the upper parts and anything that's got a small um, section of aluminium here that you need to keep straight, give that a little bit of support while you're cutting so then it won't hopefully bend and spoil the dome. You can bend them into shape but they're a bit fragile so it's best to avoid that if you can and just hold them steady while you're cutting through. And on my one I've just put a little bit of tape there just in case I slipped, which I didn't do. But, um yeah, just as when you're cutting there, just make sure that you're not not uh, accidentally slipping and uh, cutting the hell out of everything. Another thing to watch as well is that when you've got your last tab, don't be too tempted to try and break it off because sometimes the tab can extend into the panel that you're trying to remove. So then you can end up with a nick um, and spoiling the panel. So it's best if you can try and cut through all the pieces. If it looks as though it's going to break in between the, you know, the actual cut, then you'll be okay. But just be mindful of that, that you might spoil the, the panel if you try and break them off too quickly. <laughs> well, this is pretty productive actually, Sam, as well. Yeah, end up with a... So what I'll do is then keep this in storage for another uh, year. <laughs> Is that going to be used for anything? Yeah, um, this is this is Joel's dome. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, he, he doesn't know, but I think I'm going to end up doing his droid. Film. I'm probably going to buy one of the kits. Oh yeah, Markley. Yeah. Markley, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'll probably buy some one of Markley's kits. Oh, I've just pushed it in. Cool. All right. There you go. You're safe. Too excited, Sam. Push well, too hard. A little bit too hard there, but I think you know I'm trying to make it authentic. Like this one's got a massive <laughs> dent in, in the top of it, so yeah, I did push down a little bit hard on that one, but um, I think we're going to be alright. Right, Do forget now and again, but always try and cut away from yourself so you don't start slicing your fingers.
So who did you get to cut these out when you were on set? This was my job. So while Oliver was doing a lot of the um, actual body stuff and cadding up a lot of the um, components, I was busy making the donuts. Okay. That was for Force Awakens, then, right? Yeah. Just when you're getting your foot in the door, because now, because exactly. now it's nothing like that, is it? It's skinny lattes, extra shot, <laughs> extra shot lattes, <laughs> caramel lattes. Only, only when you're in, Sam. Okay. Right. Just, just to keep you out of mischief, you know. It's, it's funny though. People will understand that. It's funny because you know, I sort of when I was when I was at Pinewood with you, and I, I kind of figured that you know, it's a bit like when Daniel Deruso was with Mr Miyagi. And I thought, oh, you know, he's getting me to make a coffee and, you know, make this bit dirty down on a droid and lug all this stuff across. Like, you know, a bit like when Daniel Drusa was painting a fence. I was learning a skill, but um, I feel like I've been mugged off. <laughs> I'm going to need to get a hacksaw blade. So unfortunately that didn't cut the top area because it's a bit too tight on the curve. So what I've done, I didn't have any hacksaw blades, so I've tried a jigsaw blade, a metal cutting jigsaw blade, and that seems to do the job fine. So um, I'll carry what's, on with that for now. What's your consideration for uh, using a Dremel, or is that a little bit too hardcore? A bit hardcore, yeah. We'll get to using the Dremel in a minute when I'm cutting panels out. I'm going to cut some of the inner panels out on this one, which as I already said, a, a laser cut on the new domes, but if there's any panels you need to cut out, and additional panels, then I'm going to show people how to Dremel cut it, and you can see how scary it is. Yep. Have you done it? Have you done it before? Dremel no. cutting panels? No, I haven't. It's no. scary. The, the ones it's I've always bought from you have always been yeah. cut apart yeah. from this one. Right. So, uh... It's scary. earlier is that it's very very delicate. I think that's actually more delicate than the R2 domes. It's it's that's, it is. that's so thin there, yeah, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah. Um, mm, okay, cool. Yeah. M maybe do that first in people should consider maybe? Yeah I think so. But um, again it's a tight one. <laughs> that's what she said. Go slow. Go slow. That's what she said. That's what she said. So with this panel here, um, we're going to remove this circle and this will be replaced with a washer and a pip. So this actual middle piece isn't needed. So what I am going to do, I am going to gradually weaken this by going from side to side and just be careful that it doesn't damage any outer parts of this panel. And then I can keep this obviously and just clean the edges up. So just carefully you can do this and hopefully it will eventually break away. So if you'd like ever done one of these and just made like a massive mistake and then just gone with it anyway? Um, my first one, yeah. So my first R2 dome was entirely Dremel cut. Really? And wow. so there's a few slips on it where I've where the, it's bitten and yep. cut through the dome, unfortunately. But it's only happened once or twice. And then I finished cutting it about one o'clock one morning. That's when I finished it and I admired it and dropped it. Ah, okay. So... Um, there are a couple of mistakes I've made, yes. And I, I have had the problem of this collapsing before. I'm talking from experience where you're cutting away and just sawing too hard and it's just collapsed. So you have to then carefully tease it back into shape. But uh, the, the good thing here is as well that once you've got your inner and your outer dome, if you have got any distortion in the dome, hopefully you can bring the two back together yeah. and reshape whichever is the, is the distorted dome and it should sort the shape out. There's a little bit in here, I think. I think if you're going to be if you're going to be putting this away, 
and storing it, you definitely want to put the lower part back on as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I think this... That should be okay. I think, yeah, no, it'd right. be fine. It'd be yeah. absolutely fine. But yeah. it's, I think it's about being methodical about how you're, um, how you're going to cut this yeah. and how quickly you're going to finish the dome. Because I've got... I've got to say, my R2-D2 dome was finished about two years before the actual body was finished. So, and that just sat and sat and sat, but it was yeah. done yeah. to the point that, you know, I didn't have to mess around with any of the extra bits or didn't have to go back and repaint it or anything. It was just as is. Yeah. So but obviously you've got to protect it. Of course. While it's in storage. Yep. Actually, now would be a good time to show. Bring your bags out. Bring the bags out. Oh. So Mike Berry has kindly sent this to me as a sample and Really, it's for transporting domes. So a lot of people do events and have more than one dome. Um, he's made an R5 version as well. Uh, but this is the, the R2 version. And it's got a nice zip at the bottom. And it's wide enough for the dome to just sit on this bottom panel. And then you put the cover over and zip it up. It's a quite a thick, soft case. Um, so for transporting as a spare dome to events. But also, uh, probably a good thing to put these in when you're while you're so making so. them. Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Yeah. So yeah, if you're interested, Mike Berry is a person for these and uh, we'll post some more information about them as soon as we can. Good show. So for this bit here, I'm actually just gonna leave that bit on. I'm not gonna remove that just yet because I just don't want to lose it. It's a little bit, one of those bits that's a little bit too small not to uh, not to have part of. Do you see what I mean? On this one here. Good idea. I'll keep that yeah. on there just yeah. so uh, yeah, good we're not messing around. So the design for the ALT, where did that who where did that originate from? The ALT droid, so that was originally designed with a clear dome for Rogue One by Jake Lunt, the oh, guy yeah. that yeah. did the design for BB-8. I follow him on Instagram. Very good, good he man. Doesn't, he doesn't follow me. Oh dear. Um, Just and, like you. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he designed the the actual track droid itself for Rogue One. And then later on, when Solo came out, we decided we wanted an aluminium dome for them as well. Right. So these came later on, and they were just brought out for Solo. And you can see a bit of the BB-8 design in them. You know, you can see it's got that sort of Jake Lux style, if you like, with the eye and what have you. But yeah, I think it's really nice. And a, a guy spent a few days cadding it up. So we originally had just a clean aluminium dome that Jake actually drew the design onto. Yeah. And then we took that to a guy to cad it up, and he just took the measurements directly off of the dome. And uh, came up with that, and then it's laser cut by the same people who do the R2 domes. Right. And, it's, and it's actually an R2 dome as well. It's the same profile, same diameter, so it's, it's exactly the same. Apart from obviously the laser cutting design is different. So what I'm doing here is just taping these little parts on just to give it a little bit of stability. Because I guess if you used your pile cushion um, to, to make this, uh, to make to essentially do this upside down now it's probably going to give way under under you know a yeah. bit of weight and i would say these are a lot smaller um parts than the they r2d2 are. they are yeah but alternatively we could you also use your pile cushion and stack it inside to support the whole thing maybe we could try that you know so uh it's supporting the dome just like it's supposed to support you you know so <laughs> Oh God, well, sorry. Anyway, moving swiftly on. So if you come across this, where we've got the um, laser cutting piece here that hasn't come away like the rest of the panels, you do then have to carefully remove these by hand by wiggling them. It's not very easy to, to cut them. So if you just shake them, move them from side to side and um, they'll eventually come away. So if you just do this, and it's a bit difficult to do one-handed, but hang on a minute. Cameron. There you go. Camera's been, Cam been down my pants. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> and there you go. And then once all this is out, then you should be able to remove this a lot easier. Again, if it doesn't come away, you can just really carefully wiggle this from side to side and support the, the um, thinner sections, and then that will come away. Okay. Could you... Um could you just help me just for a second, just hold this bit so I can... Uh, there we go. So I'll make sure it's gonna... Is it gonna That's come happening. Up? So I'm just gonna take that bit off. Oh, there you go. That's cool. Yep, magic. Okay. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much. 
Right, that's cool. Uh, so now that this section is effectively off, I'm just going to take that one out. So who actually designed the um, trap droid for the for the films? Not the yeah. Jake Lunt element. But no, 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 no. The tracks. Not. Yeah, so um, with the ALT droids, originally we did it, like I mentioned earlier on, for Rogue One. And um, it was the first time Tim Berry and I worked together. And um, he did the drive system, and I was busy building the rest of the droid. And he made such a good drive system, it's great. Um, the track system, which just makes a nice droid to drive, really. Better than R2-D2, it's more stable if you weigh it down, obviously. make it Give it a bit of uh, counterweight in the bottom. But the, the track system goes over all terrain, so it's really nice, really nice thing to drive. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. I cool. like it. Well done. Like it. Right, last couple of bits. One more bit I've missed. Oh, you're a bastard. <laughs> Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. Cuts well, doesn't it? Keep you on your toes. Mmm. What a delight. <laughs> I guess it's quite easy to get cocky with this as well. As you've had a couple of good cuts, you just, yeah, you know, exactly. Just... Yeah, you've got to got to be careful. Mind your fingers. Job done. Job done. Yep. So I'm going to leave the bottom ring for now because I just think that gives it a little bit more support while we do this demonstration. So uh, I'm just going to leave this bottom ring on, and I'll I'll finish with cutting that. But for now, I'll leave that on just to give it a bit more stability and um, easy to line it up as well with the inner dome, so it sits nice and square and sits on the base of the work of the workbench. It's a good idea, actually. I think I'll uh, just add a couple of lines to that, so I know exactly where this sat previously. Now, this panel here on R2, this has got a quite a tight cut. This is just a single cut with a laser. And this middle piece is disposed of. We don't need that. So again, I'm just going to gradually just shake it from side to side and eventually the friction will break away and it will snap off, hopefully. Here we go. And then this window frame, you keep this frame and the internal piece has got the PSI, the rear PSI in. So um, yeah, that's, that's how you end up with that. It's got some tags are still there, so I've got to clean them off which we'll get to in a minute, but uh, that is no longer needed. So when you when you get to cut this middle bit here, are you going to draw that out and, you know, how's that going to yeah, so go together? If you want to turn it to camera. There you go. So, so what we will do is we will tape all the rest of the aluminium elements, the, outer, the external parts into position, and then we will, we will offer that up Draw your hole, yep. and then we'll cut it, and the same with the eye as well. Shouldn't I have just done that at the start? So, with? thinking about it, we could have done that at the start, but uh, it doesn't matter. We can do it now. So, because these two domes are spun on top of each other, they will be a perfect fit. You, the outer dome is spun over top, the top of the inner dome, and they always stay as a pair. The spinners number them and keep them as a pair through the late, all the way through to the laser cutting as well. If you do find that they don't go over each other really snug fit, it's best to just take the outer dome off and clean the inside of it because there may be just a slight bit of swarf or something in there and um, a few burrs that are mainly clearing off just to help with the alignment of the dome. So best to clean the inside up, maybe a bit of degreasing it as well.
There you go, that's made a world of difference just by filing the inside of the, the lower ring. And also I know once these tabs are filed off as well, some of them could be poking inside. So once we file these off, they'll be an even better fit, but I'm pretty happy with that so far. Oh, I see what you've done. Yeah, with your arrows, that's a good idea. Like that? Thinking that way. You draw whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Right. All good. Are you kind of ready for the eye? I think I am. Um, I'm just going to get it, make sure it's all lined up, which I think it is. And as long as really what we're looking at here is this is this front element here, isn't it? That's got to be. This has got to be square to the yeah. to where it wants to be. Yeah. Um, and then it's going to be all about marking up where the, uh, where got the hole's going to be. You got it. Yep. So, so I would I would take that into position. On the hand. Uh, no, because you might steal my things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use marking, masking tape or electrical tape for this? Either, um, but I prefer electrical tape. Yeah, it's, it's better. So if it's a, if it's out, it doesn't matter. Okay, I will tell you that. Is that the official guidelines? <laughs> I, am, I am going to mention it. I am if going to, I am if going it's to mention out, it. It doesn't matter because you're going to cut it bigger than what it needs to be. Yes, clever boy. I know. Clever See? boy. Up here's for thinking, down here's for dancing. Have you seen Sam's dancing? No, it's not good. It's as good as his thinking. <laughs> wow. He went there. Right, how'd you like them apples? Well, it's all right, but you can't draw the eye at the moment because the tape's in the way. <laughs> That's better. Okay, go for it. Does this bit need to come out as well? No. No, it doesn't stay, does it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. There you go. There's other holes that need cutting as well. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy with your artistic flair, Sam. I know, I know. What else needs cutting? The, uh, that, that, and this little That's bit it. down here. Yeah. You got it. Is there anything else? That is it for now. There is the back as well. There is the back. 22. Okay, so the panel on the back, which in my case is panel number 22. It's going to be popped into here, and where we want to cut out is going to be above this line or below this line. Correct. There we go. Cool. Good stuff. Plus that other panel below it, of course, that you've marked up as well. So there's that one. And that's all the cutting involved. It's so now the it. fun and games. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. That's going on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sam's kindly left this to me to cut various holes and drill and dremel and so on. So I'm going to start with this small hole here. I've just put the vernier on it and it's 28 millimeters across, roughly. So what I'm doing is I've set the vernier to 14 mil and I'm going to draw a few lines to try and find the center and just score that and just go around. And then where it meets up. That's pretty much where your dead center is. So I 
I will give a close up in a minute just if it does show up. I'll show to this camera. So I've just done a few scores there and that gives me the centre of the dome. So now I'm going to drill that first with our M5 drill bit. There we go. So it's not dead centre. It's not the end of the world um, because what you can do is when once you've done the hole, it's going to be bigger than the piece that's going to be on front anyway. So this this large type of washer is going to sit on here, and as you see anyway, that the marker is too small. So once I've drilled that, even if it's oversized, it's still going to be hidden by the washer anyway. And then the miniature hollow projector that goes into the, this position will fit fine behind this washer so uh, it will be all good which we'll show you when it's done so this is the hole cutter I use it's fairly cheap and cheerful to be honest with you but it, it's fine it's cut many domes so this is what I'm going to use and here we go Now, because of, the, because of the curvature of the dome, it is knocking the cutter, so it's, it's very difficult because you can't get a, an even cut over the surface of the dome. So, But don't panic here because, like I say, the tolerance hasn't got to be that tight, so you can just carry on cutting, but slowly. Cheeky, look Cheeky. at that. there we are. Nice and tidy, there we go, nice and tidy cut there. <laughs> nice and tidy. But as I'm about to show you, it doesn't matter, these things happen, so uh, this will come off. There you go. And all you need to do now is just tidy this up with a file. And all is not lost because once you place this in position, no one will ever know. There you go. So I'm gonna tidy this up now, I think. So then when I go on to the other parts, we haven't got that horror looking at us all the time. Yeah. Just make it nice and clean. It is a horror. Um, should we use your larger file? Let's, let's use your larger file. So Sam's got this file here with a nice curved back, which is what I usually use. I've got some smaller files here for more detailed work, but this, this is fine for that. So, and just, just gradually, just work your way around with it. Now, this, this is usually noisy, so. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I, I angle the file inside because there's always a, a lip inside where the aluminium is folded inside. And you always want to get rid of that. You want to get rid of the burr. So uh, I just go around the edge internally to get rid of that as well. Now I'm just doing the same on the outside, just to get rid of the burr on the out, outer part of the dome. Just a slight angle. You don't need to go too mad with this. Oh, 
what do you suggest that the inner and outer dome is stuck with? Uh, a lot of people say that uh, that M3 glue strips. Um, what do you? Um, I use mastic. Yeah, I use silicon. Silicon, yep. Um, people use hot glue as well, but I, I'm never keen on hot glue. No. It can look look a bit messy and is mm. not as as easy to apply. I find it can be a, you know a bit stringy and and gloopy. Yep. But with silicon, you know, leave the nozzle nice and and small. And if you get a, if you don't use too much, you can get a screwdriver underneath it and remove the panels at a later date. Yep. So if you want, if you build it and don't have opening panels and decide you want to at a later date, Amazing. you can then easily just prise carefully prise the panels off, cool. and then do your cutting, which I'm going to show you some Dremel cutting in a minute, and cut your panels so you can have the opening panel. So personally, silicon. I think the 3M tape is a bit more permanent though, isn't it? Mm, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be yeah. using silicon yeah. mastic, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that that still needs tidying up a little bit, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, unfortunately, we've got this snag here, but it's fine. It's going to cover up, so I may have to sand that a bit more. Um, and what I actually do always do as well before applying the silicon, I do always eyeball where the part is going to be especially on the inside and give it a bit of a sand anyway mm. just to rough it up a little bit because otherwise if there's any oils there any grease or anything then at least by sanding it, you're removing that if you you may have degreased already but sandpaper is always a good thing to as an additional thing to help addition um, I'm using I think this is something like 80 grit it's quite a quite a coarse sandpaper but it, it's fine it's good it's good for this job yep. so that's all right so that's that done for now that that will be fine um, just to show you that's there, so it sits nicely. Yep. Like curl up. Oops. Like that. Okay, hopefully let's get that to the camera. So there you go, that's that's offered that up and that sits fine. And then the hollow projector will sit in here and will adhere to this outer washer and part of the inner dome as well. So uh, that works. Right, let's go on to I think I'm gonna do we'll we'll finish big, I think. You're so doing, I'm gonna, you, so you're doing the glory hole last. I'll do the glory hole last. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, wow, is it, do you need one that big? Wow. Well. Um, so I'm going to do this one now. I think, which is just going to be drilled with an M5 drill bit, and then we just as many holes as I can manage, and then I'm going to just get a file out and just make that into the nice rectangle it needs to be. Again, if it's slightly oversized, it doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden by this. And this is where you can have a lighting display or, or whatever you fancy putting in there, just whether it be separate LEDs or some lighting screen a diffusion. So uh, yeah, I'll do that now. What's it like watching the master work, Sam? Yeah, I just keep worrying about my dome now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scratch. It's kind of weird seeing you actually doing any work. <laughs> See, I really do do work. It's been a while, to be fair. I can't believe it. Come on, that's not bad, is it? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. There you go. Just for that camera as well. So that's what we start off with. Managed to get five holes in there, and then we're going to file this to the rectangle it needs to be. So I've got this nice little one here. So again, just get rid of the burrs inside by going at an angle. 
but just careful you don't catch the outer part because it's quite a tight angle this one is. You can easily score the external part. Not that it matters too much because it is an internal dome, but it's just good, better practice to, to avoid if you can. So I suppose if I screw this up, I just have to give you another dome, don't I? Yeah, I was thinking more about the uh, fact that this might have a little bit more uh, bumps if it ever gets sold, because <laughs> you know you're you're making this, you're you're cutting it out, it's on camera, you know. Well, I hope my sons are watching this. Just remember, boys, you know what Sam's saying. Just just say Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Creepy Uncle Sam. There you go, I think that's pretty much done. It probably could do with being a little bit larger, but for now, I think, yeah. So that will need to a little bit more, Sam. A couple of mil, yep, no worries. That I'll take care of that later, up, don't worry. That lines up pretty well. Yeah, that's all right, that's okay. And I think it will be better to tweak this as well. Yeah. Once you've got the rest of the dome assembled this would probably be one of the last things you put on the dome so just keep offering it up yeah. while you're making it to make sure this this gap all around is is good and that it lines up nicely with the holes that we've already made but if it's slightly out at least you've got again this front panel hiding it all and just make your hole a little bit bigger as your last thing you do makes sense so now on to the um dremel we're on to the glory hole aren't we yeah oh no we're not doing that yet we're doing the bit at the back you want to do the bit at the back? Well, Let's do the bit at the back. Okay. That is, this this is the scariest bit to be honest with you. So uh, we'll save that the best bit till last. Okay. Cool. So we're going to do these now. Um, you took a panel out for here as well, didn't you, Sam? Mm. Yeah. So no, there's a, twenty-two. These are two panels, aren't they? Are two panels. Yep. And this panel you don't need yep. because there's a, a vent that goes behind there. Mm. Um, which is available as a 3D printed file, I believe. Sure is, link in the description. Good stuff. Yep. Um, and then this is just a normal panel. And this one here has a detail inside, which is also downloadable, I believe so. Absolutely, link in the description. Good, <laughs> good stuff. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is simply change my Dremel to a cutting disc. These quick fit uh, speed click things are wonderful. These are really good. So I will just change that now. For those that didn't know and that have got these, yes, you've got a spanner thing, uh, a spanner attached to the Dremel. Have you got one of these, Sam? Do you use these? I haven't got a wireless yeah, one. It's quite nice. It's built into the collar. You've got a... Oh, okay. Like, so you can tighten up the thread without having to rummage around for a spanner. Nice. Let the cutting commence. Now, this is going to be noisy. So, um, so this is quite scary. Um, what you need to do here is just almost... Tickle the surface of the aluminium. Just just touch it hardly. Try and push too hard and okay, now. spit your words out, granddad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first few cuts, what you've got to do is just skim the surface. Don't push too hard, otherwise it will bite. You do have to go across the lines that you cut two or three times. We'll, we'll see how many this one takes. It just depends on the, the thickness that the dome has been spun. So I will just follow these lines um, if anything, I'll undercut it because we can always file it back to make it the right size. It's a lot easier to do that rather than trying to achieve the right size in, with your Dremel. So here we go.
No es cine. <laughs> yes. You should have been wearing your PPE. You're right. You should have been wearing a mask. I, I should have been. How, should have been. Should, how does the uh, metal taste? So, it's all good. Um, I'll just keep your mouth shut. Um, I don't know if you noticed, hopefully you did. Hold the gem with both hands. Don't start waving it around, trying to do it with one hand. If you slip, if it bites, it could get you. So just keep your hands clear and always just, you know, hold it steady and just really do, don't push too hard at all. So now I'm just gonna not talk and I'm gonna carry on and finish cutting out at least one of these panels and you'll just see how many cuts it takes. But I think it's gonna probably take another two or three. So here we go. So you can see it bounced a couple of times, so you have to react as quickly as you can to try and get it away from the dome. And now here, it's gonna bite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the dome on the flat surface now, so it's not sliding on here, and then I can get at it better. Hold this with both hands, and this should be steady on the flat surface. Right, so that's biting quite a lot for some reason. You could use some WD-40 to try and stop that happening. Luckily, not the end of the world because it's the internal dome. If it's an outer dome, we'd be in trouble. That would be classed as weathering. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the um, file. Not the file. What I'm going to do now is use the hacksaw blade because it will be just wide enough, thankfully, that the Dremel cut does, just to finish off these corners here because you're a bit too treacherous towards here of this continuously happening and I felt it was going to bite so we'll just finish this off with this. That's one done. I'm gonna go for this one now. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bigger cutting wheel. This cutting wheel is getting a little bit small now. Um, they're useful to, to keep for tighter areas like this area maybe, but for these long cuts, I'm gonna get a bigger cutting wheel. So then it obviously will, uh, should last for the length of cutting that as well.
if the blind fits in that hole, because that was a thinner cutting disc. Uh, so it's tighter this way. There we go. There you go. So that's those two done. And again, I'm just going to get the file and clean it up both inside and out. And then eventually what we'll do when the panels are being finished and put on, this will need to be overcut again. But just with the file, I'm cleaning it up for now, but we'll file back at a later date beyond that black line, I would have thought and we'll tidy it up inside again. Guilty, so I'm just tidying up this, uh, tidying up your hole a little bit, Sam. Oh, beautiful. Is it a tight hole? <laughs> Gonna have a reveal to the camera in a minute. Then. Wow, okay. look at so that. a little bit better. We'll probably watch this back and say, No, it's no different, but uh, <laughs> to me, that's better. Okay, so now the glory hole. The glory hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the smaller wheels, as many small wheels as I can that I've saved from the past, because that will give you a better go on the curvature. If you're using a big wheel, it's, it's just going to be harder and it's going to cut a wider hole. And it's going to probably give you some flat flat sides. So this should give you a more of a flowing hole. Is there such a thing? No, no.
So now that's done, um, I'm going to tidy this up with the file. We had a slight slip there, but apart from that, pretty impressed. So I think maybe I was out of practice with the first few holes. Um, so maybe start on the less important holes like I have done on this demonstration. And then you'll get more experienced and more used to it, more confident, and you'll get a feeling for how the tools can bite. And, um, you know, maybe wear gloves, but I find with these, if they bite, they bite, even if you're wearing gloves. Um, so, yeah, I'll tidy this up and then it'll be job done. What I will say is I showed you the, me changing these discs. You know, that's a bit too small because then you're getting very close with the actual Dremel to the aluminium dome. But then this one was probably the largest one that I used and I was having trouble turning it on the circle and the Dremel does get very warm so you may have to break in between and uh, let the Dremel cool down a little bit. So now I'll just fold this up and um, just tidy it up and show you a before and after. So there's a before. What a lovely power. So there you go, that's pretty much done. It's not perfect, but um, it just needs a little bit more work by Sam. Um, got to give him something to do. Uh, just a little tip here to make a perfect circle. Just lean across here. So if you've got a bottle with a tapered neck, wine bottles are very good, but unfortunately Sam drank it all last time he was around. <laughs> um, all you need to do is just get some double-sided tape and then adhere some Sandpaper, this is probably too coarse, but just some thin sandpaper with double sided tape and then offer it to the hole and then just turn it and you'll get a perfect diameter on the on the eye hole then. So that's one way of doing it. You can just eyeball it, just take it beyond this black mark, which will probably be fine. Um, and once that's done, then this will line up nicely and we've got, just to show, one, two, three, there we go. So apart from the slight enlargement of the holes, but that's best to leave once you've assembled all the dome yep. and you know where your final position is for your panels. You can adjust because it may be slightly over to the right or left and you may only need to just take this part off and just move that a little bit. But um, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, that's how you cut a dome. So a few pointers for preparing your panels to get them ready for painting and finishing, ready to go back onto the dome. As we discussed earlier on, I recommend silicon, it's very good. Um, you can use clear, so if there is any overlay then you don't see it as easily. And once it's dry you can just trim it with a, um, a knife. Alternatively, what someone did say to me, and it's quite a good idea, is you could go for white silicon. So then when it does bleed through the gaps it's easier to see. And then you're committed and you have to remove it all obviously and it's, it's easy to find. So you get these tags here which hopefully you can get that in shot. So we've got four tags here, and then you just need to file those off. There we go. So we've got the four tags here, one in the, the middle of each length of panel. So you need to file these off, obviously. 
and you may have them on the dome itself as well and all you need to do is get your file and carefully keep your file as square as you can with a flat ended file and then just carefully rub on the tab and then when you get closer to the panel just do this hang on. So we've got, that's how big the tabs are, these ones here, they can be as big as that. But then once you start to take it off and it nearly disappears, you don't want to go too hard because then you could put a flat edge into your panel. So then what you need to do is just go along the length, not along the length like that, but just go at an angle so you're running along the length of the panel. So then you know when you've sort of reached the surface if you like. It's flush, and just rub your finger across, see if you can feel it, I can just feel it, give us a couple more probably, and there you go. And what I will do as well, is I will just scratch the back of the panel, just to make sure there's no burrs from the laser cutting, and then there you go, I'll put my hand against it so you can hopefully see that, and then that's nice and smooth. So that's all you need to know for that really, um, just some additional pointers. What we've got here is there's this one, this panel here, you've got a, obviously a curvature on the inside section. So I use this file which has got a domed back, which is like Sam was using for the curvature of the dome. And then just similar thing, but you just keep it square and then you just file that like so. What I do as well, I, I rest the file against my finger, not too hard. Okay, so that's both nearly done. I don't know if you can see that, but just two smaller tags left. And then just really carefully, just to finish it off. Can't deny it's quite tricky that, but uh, pretty pleased with that. That's good. You don't want to keep going too far because end up you'll end up with a oval, and then you'll just be chasing yourself, and the hole will just become bigger and bigger. Um, and then what you do with that piece is you get your washer, and then once this is placed on the top of the dome, your washer goes in there, and that will sit quite nicely there like so and then you get your pip that goes inside that which might be a bit too proud it might be a bit thick and sit a bit too high so you might have to sand the pip back a little bit and then silicon into place on top of the dome another thing I use uh, just so you know is for the PSI's which has a PSI panel here so there's various PSI um, display holders that you can have that hold the LED board and what I sometimes do is just have a, a pill bottle that you can mount the PSI LED lights onto so you put them at the back of the pill bottle so you've got a bit of a, a distance from the edge of the dome just to allow for some diffusion and then I use these white acrylic discs and then just silicon them in place like so and we have it like that Alternatively, there are PSI holders that you can get on astromech.net or there's a 3D printed file that you can get from myself from my uh, dome page where you can 3D print and it become, you have a hex infill so you get the right infill for the PSI holder and that sits nicely into the front and back PSI. So this is a 3D printed PSI holder and it's got a hex infill which if I shine my torch through it hopefully you can see it. So that's the hex infill, that's the front obviously and it's got a thread on it so this sits in the hole that you cut for the rear PSI and then you get a, a threaded piece 
and your board sits on the back there and then this goes over the top and holds the board in place once you do the thread up nice and tight like so and it holds it all in place and there's a bit of a distance from the front and back to give you some diffusion and you can always put extra um, plastic in there just to diffuse it somewhat whether it be like a milk bottle carton or something like that so just a couple of extra things to note on the R2 dome um, when you remove this smaller window frame you don't need this inner component here because you have your whether you have your light in there the red emotion light or just the inner panel of the dome that's left like that you don't have the outer panel that's the same with this one which I showed earlier that's your window frame and then that inner piece that comes away and this is the rear PSI that you have to cut yourself What's going on guys, Sam Prentice here, back once again with the ALT Droid. Look at this beauty, I've covered it in tape. Why? Because I wanted all the panels to stay together. So, thank you very much to Lee Towsey for cutting this and also, <laughs> and also signing this. Look at that, fantastic. Right then, here we have 12 and 13. Now then, Lee might have a very special way of doing things but um, I'm old school, so yeah, check it out. So all we're really looking for here is just to take the burrs off, just to take those little tabs off and get it looking real sweet. Doesn't take much. Lee finds it very therapeutic apparently doing this. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure I could ever settle down. Just be quiet for five minutes. Although, to be fair, Lee has done quite a lot of talking today, and I've done very little. So, what do you think of this, Lee? Is this like sacrilege to you? No, it's good. It makes a nice place to see doing some work, Sam. You did say that early on today, but... Uh, well, I've been in and out fetching in coffees. I've been... I've had to run up to the shop to get him a little choppy bar. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's... Um, it's not rocket science, this bit, is it? Anyone can do it. Indeed. A child. Indeed. Yeah, get a young child to do this. Good idea. It's a good idea. It is a good idea. Right, where are we? We're here. 13 and 12. Do you want to zoom in on this? Do you like a sharp edge, do you, Lee? I do like a sharp edge. Yeah, always good. It probably don't do that. No. But um, it's feeling good. So, how many ALT domes have been finished in the UK? Um, just mine, as far as I know, Sam. Just the one behind you. Oh, the one with the dent in it. Yeah, that's the one. That I didn't cause. That indeed. No, it fell over in the car, didn't it? You were with me at the time, so it was a bad penny. It wasn't your fault, but no, it's uh, face planted in the car, thought it'd be fine, opened the doors when we got home, and um, yeah, there it was. It's bad news. Well, this won't take too long, I don't think, but uh, in order to see the finished product, you're going to have to mosey on down to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash the real Sam Prentice. So we will catch you next time. This has been the ALT Droid. I have been Sam Prentice. He has been Lee Towsey. That's an R2-D2 dome. It's been an amazing day. Back to Lee and Sam in the studio. Back to us. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll just make <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so what I found quite useful when I was doing this dome is to make sure that you have got correlation of either numbers or arrows or whatever. The reason for that is obviously when you can put it back together again, you can have a nice straight line and understand exactly where everything's supposed to be. The best thing to do when you're cutting an ALT dome is to draw this hole first. So this one, this one, this one, and then also the couple of cuts that's in the back as well. If you leave that to last, it's not gonna be curtains for you or anything like that, but what I will say is it's gonna make it slightly more of a challenge and you might have to get Lee Towsy to cut it for you. Question for you, Sam. Go on then, Lee, what's up? How are you going to remove that writing on the outside of your dome? Well, I'm just going to sand it back. Is that all right? Yeah. Or Fine. I might wire will it. Yeah. I've got, it's got to be degreased anyway before it's painted, so. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
or you can use some um, IPA, I guess. that IPA might get it off as well. That's it great. might do. That's great. It might do. It's a, it's a good look. Thanks.